All right, now that our model is UV unwrapped, it's time to do some texture baking. So what we're going to do is we're going to extract the high resolution mesh or the details from the high resolution mesh into a normal map. So here's how we do that. In the retopo room, if we go up to bake, bake with normal map per pixel. And here's how this works. Let me get rid of this. So this is what you'll see. What the software is going to do is it's going to uh, project the mesh both outwards along its normal and inwards along its normal. So as you see, if I project outwards um, the mesh, uh, hopefully you can see there, it's much larger than the high resolution mesh. If I bring out the outside scan depth to something like say 4, then what you'll see is that there are some areas that are not um, covered by the retopology mesh. So when you're changing this outside depth, you want to make sure that you can't see any area of your high resolution mesh. So I might increase this to 5, and as you see now my high resolution mesh covers everything. So now if I preview inner shell, this is exactly the opposite. Now you want to make sure that you can't see any part of your uh, high, of your low resolution retopology mesh. So if I decrease this to 4, then you can see there might be some areas like this where it's not going in far enough, so you just increase that inside scan depth until you can't see it anymore. Now there's one more area here, it looks like it's the only spot on the mesh where the retopology object is not being projected in far enough, and I could increase my scan depth and in this case that would probably work, but I just want to show you a way that you can isolate certain areas to give them unique scan depths because in some models projecting this too far in or out for the entire model can be problematic. There might be some areas that you want projected further than others. And the way this is done is through the spheres of influence. If I hit add zone and then pick zone, I can place that over a specific region and then I can say that inside of this zone I want my in depth and my out depth to be different so I might change it to 7 for just this one zone and that will give it a different scan depth from the, from the rest of the model. Alright, that's yeah, looking pretty good so I'm just going to hit OK and then it will ask you about baking local occlusion. This will effectively make the, uh, the crevices darker and the corners brighter in your texture, which I don't want to do. Actually, wait, there's one thing I forgot. Uh, if you used a different shader like I did to be able to see the model a bit better, uh, make sure that you change it back to this very first one, this default gray. Any of these other shaders will um, give you additional layers in the paint room that you probably don't want and they might uh, mess with your textures a bit. Alright, back in the retopo room, I'm just going to go back, excuse me, to bake with normal map and it preserves all your settings from before so we don't have to do anything, I'm just going to hit OK. I do not want to bake local occlusion because we're going to do this in the paint room and it will be a bit more useful for our smart material, so I'm going to turn that off. I'm just going to hit OK and then it will ask you for a bunch of um, parameters. So the normal map software preset. So different softwares read normal maps differently. So I know that this model is going to um, Unity. So I'm going to leave it at that. And then most of these you can ignore except I'm also going to turn on weld vertices which will just weld vertices that might be separated uh, together if they are close enough. And then last one here is the UV set name. Now if you have multiple UV sets like I do, I have uh, two different ones here because I have two different retopology objects, you're going to want to specify which one you're using. Now here it's defaulted to the one I want, but you might need to change that. And then the texture width. Now I know I want this to be a 2K texture, and then I just hit OK. Let me just wait for 
3D coat to do its thing. It shouldn't take terribly long. There, it's already done. Now it may look like nothing happened, but if we go to the paint room, and then we also need to make sure we hide our voxel object because we can still see that. So if we go to the vox tree and just hide the root, now we have our low resolution mesh. No, I'm serious. There it is. That's the wireframe, and this is what it looks like with that normal map baked. Now my texture editor, it's still on the Arch 1 uh, UV set, so I'm going to change that to Arch 2. And if we change our uh, image to normals, you can see the normal map. Very cool. So if we go to our layers, we'll see that we have a uh, normal map right here. If we turn that off, this is what our model looks like with no, no normal map. And if we turn the normal map back on, quite the difference. Now using this, there are still two more uh, type of textures that we need to bake. It'll also give you this arch too. I'm just going to delete that real quick. So you need to bake out an ambient occlusion map and a curvature map. Now it may appear in my case that I already have these. Uh, these are for the other arch, so I'm going to just hide both of those. And so then I will go to textures and calculate curvature. We'll do that one first. And this is just calculating the convexity of the surface. So now if we bring up the curvature map, which has been calculated for this object now, we bring that up and it may be a little hard to see, but if we look in the texture editor, you can see there are areas of white, areas of black, and a lot of gray. The areas of white are the um, convex areas and the areas of black are the concave surfaces. So that will help with our smart material. And the next thing we need to do is we need to calculate the ambient occlusion. So we go to textures, calculate occlusion, and I just leave all these at their defaults. And this actually takes a while. If it takes too long, I'm just going to jump ahead to where it finishes. And it's done. So as you look in our, uh, if you look in our text editor, you can see all the ambient occlusion. If you look on our model, if I turn it off and on, you can see the difference that makes. So this ambient occlusion map will also be used with our smart material, which I will discuss on how to make that in the next video.